can I have a look? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, clothing manufactured on an island in the middle of the Pacific called Saipan. In factories, as we saw with our hidden cameras, jam full of low-cost workers brought in from China, putting in 14-hour days under often miserable conditions, making clothes under contract for the American market. Polo stars? Polo. P-O-A-R-O. And it's not just Polo. The Gap, the Disney Company, parent of ABC, Jones New York, Liz Claiborne, and many others all have had some of their clothing lines made by manufacturers on Saipan 2. A place where authorities say many factories have cheated thousands of workers out of their pay and their rights. They're locked in politically, economically, and in, in some cases physically. And as we found in a 2020 investigation on Saipan, when the long day of making t-shirts for America ends, workers are kept in crowded, often rat-infested labor barracks. Of course, some are better than others. Yeah. But at this one, the toilets didn't work, the showers barely worked, and the water was contaminated. We've seen some very bad conditions. Made all the more shameful by the fact that the island of Saipan is not some foreign sweatshop haven. The site of a famous battle during World War II. Saipan cost 15,000 American casualties. Saipan has been a territory, a commonwealth of the United States of America since 1976. A place where the American flag goes up every morning. Sometimes you have to ask yourself what's going on out there. There are things going on that really shouldn't be going on on American soil. Even though most of the factories here are foreign owned, using Chinese fabric and Chinese workers, the clothing made here can legally be labeled as made in the USA a label that was supposed to help protect the jobs of American garment workers. It's outrageous. It's a total distortion of what the label was meant to indicate to the buyer. Alan Stamen, the official at the Department of the Interior in Washington, who oversees Saipan and other U.S. territories, says it's a huge scam that the Clinton administration is now trying to stop. This is huge growth, an $800 million a year business, um, employing over 15,000 people, and in fact putting probably 15,000 Americans out of work. Some retailers, including Polo and The Gap, have dropped or modified the Made in the USA label. But at this Hong Kong Chinese-owned factory at 2 in the morning, we saw Made in the USA labels going on Calvin Klein t-shirts headed for American stores this spring. Across the room, Chinese workers were putting Made in the USA labels on sports shirts with the Fila logo. The retail list reads like a who's who of, of, of major U.S. retailers. Just about everybody I've ever heard of is, is buying product uh, through there. And they can legally say Made in the USA. That's correct. And it's all made possible because of the original agreement between Saipan and the U.S. permitting Saipan to set its own immigration policies. There are now far more foreign contract workers here than U.S. citizens, most from mainland China. Young women who can be seen being trucked around the island. Women who have been told by recruiters in China they're going to good jobs in America, but who authorities say essentially have become indentured servants, a practice outlawed in America at the same time as slavery. I've seen people locked in barracks, locked behind barbed wire. So American law really stops at the barbed wire gates of these factories. In many instances, it does. Eric Gregoire, a Catholic Church human rights worker from New Jersey, who's also been a consultant for the Interior Department, is one of the few outsiders to have penetrated the closed world of the Saipan garment factories. I don't think they like outsiders being around, especially outsiders like me, who might inform people of what their rights are. It is a world in which Gregoire says the women have to pay government officials in China fees of as much as six or seven thousand dollars to even get jobs on Saipan, putting them deep in debt and beholden to both factory bosses and the officials back in China. It's a, a perfect system. If you're uh, one of the people who are getting your clothing from here, you're getting it very cheap. You're getting it from a workforce who really is going to toe the line. In fact, American authorities have discovered many Chinese workers are forced to sign secret agreements known as shadow contracts before they leave China, severely and in some ways illegally restricting their activities while on American soil. For example, in this agreement, translated into English by American authorities, 
workers are forbidden to participate in any religious or political activity or to ask for a salary increase or even to fall in love or get married, much as might be the case in mainland China.